Parlay with Podrick podcast. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by Joe Symes and Colin White from the band Joe Symes and the Loving Kind. Um, they're a band from Liverpool who have twice headlined Noel Gallagher's after show party at the O2 Academy in Liverpool. They've also headlined the Folk in the Dock Festival at Albert Dock and have played at the Hillsborough Truth and Justice concert at the Royal Court and have supported various bands, including the Christians, Republica, and Steve Craddock. They've also been played regularly at Anfield over the last 12 months by George Sefton over the public address. And they were featured in the official LFC match programme for Liverpool and Aston Villa last week. So lads, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show this evening. Thanks, Milan, for coming on. Hello. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, you, you. You have a lot going on at the moment. You've been kept busy over lockdown. Yeah, considering, um, obviously, considering there's, there's been a, a lockdown and obviously we had to wait, you know, obviously since before Christmas to get back to rehearsals, which we did this week, and uh, studio time, unfortunately, had to be delayed for our upcoming EP. Fortunately, we're going to be back in next month to finish that off finally at last. But uh, in, 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 the, in the lockdown, um, even though there was like, you were limited on what you could actually do, uh, we were still like we were still very very busy online with you know uh, like we play all over the world magazine interviews reviews uh, even even a few celebrity endorsement videos went out pra- praising our, our our last album phase two so you know you know we we've, you know we've still been ticking over and keeping busy and um, you know it's, you know not not not, not even a global pandemic is going to stop us <laughs> that's it yeah you you can um, add my podcast to that long list as well there so kept going oh, of course naturally. <laughs> Um, so look, I, I suppose just before we get before we get stuck into it, just going to the usual cheers we do at the, the start of every interview there. So I have a very a very relevant mug beside me here of the Beatles because you've an inspiration for both of you, which will come to in a minute. So cheers and good health, lads. So um, yes. cheers and good health. Um, so just before we get stuck into the interview, guys, maybe we could just give. A, just a bit of small bit of background about yourselves, where you're from in Liverpool, and how you got together to to, to start the band. I'm from North Screen. That's a, a, a part of Liverpool. Yeah, I, I'm um, I'm from Fazakli, which is where we are now. Uh, our bass player Alan was originally from Shubrook, but uh, he now lives in Warrington, has done for several years. Very good. Uh, the band, my staff to gigs by myself in Liverpool. To be in two previous bands which didn't work out. And um getting gigs, acoustic gigs from one end of the city to the other end of the city and all that. Colin had known for a while. Colin had just split from his other bands and offered to come now out on bongos, to which he progressed and started to audition members, you know, bass players, guitarists, keyboard players, um we changed We've gone through two different lineups. They were now a three piece, which is the best there would be. A lot more room. And, uh, you know, we just continue to on doing what we're doing. So. You've been described before as a band that only the, the three people in it, you sound like nine. So that's kind of a good thing. We did a gig in, a, I think it was in Manchester, <laughs> and this, this, it was person we didn't, didn't know, you know, obviously came, came up to us and said he really enjoyed the show. And so we said, no, you sound like, you, yeah, I thought we listen to nine people on stage and all So though, you know, the three people to sound like nine people, uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you play, you know, up-tempo, catchy rock pop songs. So uh, I think we took that on board and took that well. Uh, yeah, that was it. That was a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was meant as a compliment as well, so. Oh, absolutely, so. yeah, definitely. <laughs> took that um, one on board. So it just, just the name, um, Joe Simons and Loving Kind, what was the inspiration behind that? Obviously, Joe was the obvious half of it. We know where the inspiration came from, half of it, for, for the other half. Well, when I came on board, I first, uh, you know, because Joe had been doing um, some acoustic gigs on it, just under his own name, just for, for, for a, few, a few months before I came on board. And, you know, I, I kind of like, you know, Began like a company on like you know percussion lives as Joe said before, and then you know after after a few months we kind of said well you know let's expand it into an actual band now. 
it, we could have we could have easily said, okay, we're not going to call ourselves to something or what a, a, a band name, um, you know, without Joe's name, just like something or or, or whatever. Um, but because Joe had, had already done, I've had a lot of publicity anyway. With again, with like interviews and sessions and and, and and so on, we kind of just want to like expand on that to say, oh, you know, instead of someone going, oh, we know that band with that that that, that fellow Joe's in the back. Listen, this is band now. So instead, it, it, it was thought, so why don't we call ourselves, you know, Joe Sands and something? And eventually, you know, I thought, well, you know, like it kind of just you know popped in my head. It, it was, why don't we call ourselves Joe Sands and the Loving Kind? And we liked it, and the name stuck ever since. The, it, the, the actual phrase, the Loving Kind, actually comes from a, the REM song Get Up. So obviously from here and that song, it kind of, you know, kind of, you know, it's like remains implanted on my brain. And then although we have kind of figured of course, you know, Joe Sam's and the whatever, something I thought Joe Sam's woman kind of, kind of, kind of works. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, please, it, it sounds great. You know, it's simple, rolls off the tongue, classic. Loads of people have come once the band name, so yeah. it's very Motown. Classic. Motown, so you know, what happened with that? Yeah. To pardon the pun, it strikes a card. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's good. Um, who would you say would be your biggest influences musically? Like, Mine's the Beatles. Mine's the Beatles. The Beatles, the Doors. The Beatles, the Doors. Because it goes beyond music. It goes into film and stuff as well. Mm. You know, film composers. Everything hits. You know. But first of all, she made the top of the Beatles. That's what made me want to do what I want to do. Mm. Yeah, first off. Well, there's a huge pedigree with Liverpool and music, you know, I suppose. The Irish yeah. have, have, have a certain um, part to play in that as well with the, the connection between Liverpool and, and, and Ireland, like, you know. So, have you any Irish um, ancestors yourselves that you know of? People might be interested to know. Uh, well... I think I mentioned this to you the other day when we were having a chat. Um, my granddad's parents, uh, they were actually from Ireland. Um, they were from Wexford, I believe. Yeah. And they, they, came, they came over to Liverpool. And then obviously my granddad was, was born here. So, he, so he, you know, he, he was born in Liverpool, mm. from Liverpool. But obviously his, his parents were full, were full on, full on Irish. Um, and I, 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 there might be others, but that, that's the definite direct link from, say, the recent few generations. Actually, it's, it's funny, I, I, I kind of forgotten about this, but um, my granddad during the 19th days actually did play for Liverpool. Very good, yeah. But, just... but, unfortunately, but unfortunately, his career was ended because he was called up for the war. So that kind of like ended, ended his career, sadly. Yeah, but but he, he still, he still over, the, over the decades after that, he still had an affiliation with them. He still had a relationship with them. And he, he was invited to like, you know, Christmas parties. And so, so he, 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 met, he met a lot, a lot of those kind of like classic, you know, managers and people involved. So, so, so he kind of kept that link there. Yeah. Really I mean, so. My brother's a bit older as well. So obviously he's kept that, that mantle going. Yeah. I have no idea. I've got any Irish ancestors or anything. I might have. I don't know. There's, there's a strong chance somewhere along the line there could be some connection anyway. I think 75% of the Liverpool people have some form of Irish heritage. So, yeah. so just, just, yeah. When you mentioned Wexford Air, Colin, it just kind of struck, again, struck an Eric Harvard with me because Anfield, the area, apparently gets its name from a, to- a, a townland in County Wexford called Anfield with an E. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so there's kind of a connection there, that. like, you know, Anfield, apparently that's what they say, that Anfield County Wexford was an inspiration for Anfield and Liverpool. And you see, okay. like, you might have heard of Killarney Road, Bray Road, Liverpool, like, they'd, they'd be Irish towns. Yeah. And, and Dingle as well is a yeah. town in County Kerry, like, you know, so just, well, just makes clear, sense. Yeah. nice links between um, the, even in place names, so that's... Yeah, that's 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 all yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, so what I was going to do just to um, to kick off, just to show the people um, what you can do, I was going to ask you to play a very relevant song at the moment as we're two weeks away from the start of summer. As they, as they say in Ireland, at the, I don't know if they say it in Liverpool, but it's a fairly big saying in, uh, in Ireland. Um, it's a grand stretch in the evenings. Whenever the clocks go forward, it's a great, it's a grand stretch in the evenings, we always say, because it it's brighter. And then... Um, Someone else has been saying recently there's a grand stretch in the restrictions with COVID, unfortunately. But um, yeah. Uh, but "Summer's Almost Coming" is is one of your is one of my favorite songs of yours. Um, I really, in particular, like 
photograph of it, the rainbow, and the and I think you're saying Joe, it's taken in your own back garden. So that and that's the it's in the yeah. it's on the cover of your second album, phase two. Oh yeah, you know, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. yeah. I took that picture just off the cuff. It just did, I just thought what a lovely rainbow. And half of the, under the rainbow it's grey, it's really grey. Drizzle with like on top of it, it's nice and blue and stuff. Mm. You know, so I'm glad I caught that image. Yeah. It's, it, uh, it's had a lot of people guessing where it is. The other Random, ones, yeah. Random. <clears throat> a lot of people have thought it's like elsewhere and stuff, and like yeah, down in London and all that. Yeah, home counties. You know, really posh part to London. It's, you know, it's my back garden. <laughs> As Jory Cinnamon would say, it's a belter. So, uh, yeah, it is. Performed on LFC TV. Yeah. Um, I say that gave you great exposure globally. Yeah, it did. Um, we did it. Uh, someone you know was in a bar in Spain because once we did the performance, I was wondering when I was going to go out because I had this scene not really not about it. But I was I didn't have a clue myself what was going on. Almost later, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. and then someone said, Go and touch me. I said, hey, We'll just be within Spain. And you just come on, on the telly in Spain, like on LCTV. Or say, well, we didn't even know about it. So, you know, it did have a lot of exposure. And hopefully, we're going to be back on the show soon. We'll, 
when we got the pandemic and stuff that's been going on, all that stuff with the blocks on me, as we know, live performances and stuff and all that. So, you know, hopefully we should be back on this year because we've got some good links with the club. Yeah, I'd definitely love to promote DP as well. You know, it'd be nice to kind of go on there and perform, you know, maybe, you know a, couple, a couple of songs specifically from that EP and, it and stuff and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure like, once, they, once they get to get things going, obviously, you know, the uh, you know, the work comes back, definitely. Great stuff. George Sefton is a big fan of yours. Um, yeah, and sure. Yeah. And he's been a good support to you as well, playing your songs at, at halftime and stuff at Liverpool matches. So that must be a great honour to have your music Definitely. play at Anfield. I mean, you know, having music play to that many people at half time is an absolute honour. You know, especially someone who's been there as long as he has. You know, he's like, he's, he's part of the history of the club. I've been, 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 been 50 years, hasn't he? Yeah. He's been there a long time. He's yeah. playing our songs that feels, you know, it's, it's an absolute honour. It is yeah. to like, hear it and all that. And especially he's a fan, he said that he, you know, he's some podcast he's on that. He has our two albums on his desk in front of him. <laughs> And every, t- and every time they got, every time they got played as well, it was either a friend, a, a friend or, or relation. I'd always, you know, either was several people and get in touch, like I maybe like film it during the half time. Say, oh, they're playing your song now, and obviously after that, we you know end up we post it on Instagram and Facebook and all that. Like so, it's always nice to get like people like you know saying they're playing it right now, so we knew exactly what was going on and all that. And you know, just there's thousands of people that listen to your music and all that. Say, you know, it can't get better than that, really. I'd say it led to an upsurge in a uh, in interest from Norway. It's kind of like the joke from Evertonians have like that. All Liverpool's fans are Irish or Norwegian, you know. So, um, I've, 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 I've met I've met I've met a lot of uh, Norwegian Liverpool supporters, not, and they're all, they're always they're always up for a party, <laughs> always up for a good time, funny. Nice they're, sim- they're similar enough to ourselves, then. Yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're, I spent I spent a, I spent a whole day with with with, with a loads of them once. Like a friend met them, and I met up met up met up with the friends, and we just spent like the whole day. In, in, in town with them going on after bar after bar after bar after bar they would you know they would they were party animals they would do they were, they were a funny bunch of people very very funny and apparently I heard that like once 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 the night had ended they just carried on for the whole weekend they just didn't stop yeah. <laughs> you know they're probably via relatives maybe or something maybe possibly <laughs> possibly in there possibly in there so the next track I was going to ask you to play was a song you performed live on LFC TV all the things you said. Creeping inside of my head All of the things you said Gotta move on now Try to work it out All of the things we said Scream! 
you also played in played at the Hillsborough Truth and Justice concert in the in the Royal Court, and yeah. I suppose the Hillsborough anniversary was on Thursday. Yeah, so, yeah, well, yeah. So, as Scousers born and bred, what did it mean to you to be involved in, in such a in, in such a tribute? It was great to, to be involved in doing it. Uh, to just be going to a football game and that happens, she don't know what's going to happen, you know, and I think it affected and still affecting a lot of people. And I don't think you can ever forget that, ever. So we were proud to lend our hands to it, show our support to it. Yeah. And it was great to be able to, you know, to do it. The turnout was fantastic. I mean, um... You know, like the the atmosphere was was great, and everyone everyone was like, you well, know, happy to be there. And it was it was just a really really good atmosphere for just for such a, a noble cause as well. And uh, my 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 recollection of of the day was it everything went so quickly because like you know it was like like the way like there was the bands were all at, all at live even like you know everyone only had like about a fifteen minute or 10, 15 minutes slot. So it was like play band next play back next, and it was like it was like. Like like it's like a um, a conveyor belt of like people going like go next next and it was like you know it kind of went so quickly, um but obviously you know like uh, people there you know it, it went down great you know and it was you know it, it sort of um helped out the the cause and everything it was just it was great to play it and it was it was a really really good day and it was great to play the world course as well you know it's, it's, it's a great venue it's actually a shame that not, not a lot of bands play there anymore but I know it's. Yeah. That, you know, do more plays these days, but you know, it'd be great to see more bands on there, like like it's back in the back in the old days. But you know, you never know. It was, it was good gigs, good, great, great to play. No, no, that's a great a great achievement, and you can always say you played it as well. So, mm. fair dues. Um, the next song I was going to ask you to play there is a is a dedication to VAR and the officials who keep balding it up. The decisions, fine line. It's from your first album. Guys. sleep they're the kind that I don't want to meet hearts racing we're living a lie you tell me not to worry and everything will keep things are piling up I'm in the deep dark lazy stop telling me Standing on the street Everybody staring as we speak Arms waving I'm trying to get by You walk a fine line Let's face it
The final song I was going to play there, guys, is um, Things Get Better. It's from your double A-sided single. Um, and yeah. It's my favourite track of yours. And Jar Sefton seems to agree because he plays it quite a lot at Anfield as well. Yeah. So and hopefully it's a metaphor for this year, for this COVID stuff as well, that things hopefully will get better like. So, so. ending on a positive note. Let's hope so because we can't, can't carry on like this. <laughs> no. Tough year. That's it. you've played very famous places in the past you played the Cavern Club and you recorded down in Abbey Road in London yeah. as a Liverpool band I said that meant a lot to you to record in Abbey Road did it, with the Beatles connection and that yeah it's just, it's just it's, it's, I mean what an honour I can say you could deliver Abbey Road like yeah <laughs> oh. water cost the Paul hasn't really, you know, what he didn't want to be in the war from the story. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I thought, you know. Yeah. The bus drivers and taxi drivers went to yeah, the about people doing that. The thing I really like about you is you are really versatile musically. Like, your two albums um, are, are quite different. You're still yeah. styling both of them. Just in your own words, just for, um, you know, for, for potential fans, hopefully that's will be queuing up to buy your album after this. How would you describe your, your style, your musical style? Honest. 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 That's okay. that's all I can say. It's, it, it's honest. Um, it's self-explanatory. It's whatever you, you want it to be. Um, whether it's like a comment on like 
the music can like you can relate to the music in your own situation where you are in the world or whatever, like you know, like you know, that sounds okay, or that reminds me of something I did, or that, that was a situation I was in and stuff and all that. Um going back to things get better, I actually have a woman who contacted me on Facebook uh, moaning at me saying how dare I write a song about her like that and I, I didn't I don't know the whole her life and you know you're not the Beatles and like how can you write that song about me you don't know me and all that that's what's all about me and stuff we didn't know she was we didn't even know <laughs> she was <laughs> she just told the strangers some crap what we got in touch with saying this is about me and you did this is like what are you talking about how do you know about me and all that that song about my life and all that I don't even know who you are one of the funny things about best, one of the funny things about being in a band is like sometimes you do come across some very old people. You come across some great people, but at the same time you come across some very old people as well. And it's like that's an absolute true story. That is true. Remember, remember, remember reading that on it online. Do you know who's this person? Who is this person? <laughs> you Did you even know who she was? You should give us some complimentary tickets for your gig in Jimmy's, which I'm just about to come to in a second. So Joe and Symes and Loving Kind are going to be in Jimmy's Bowl Street in Liverpool. On the second of July, yeah. doors are at half seven. Yeah, yeah, and all, all t- tickets are uh, five pounds, and they're uh, available exclusively from uh, the Jimmy's website. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to include the link on on the video there, but the website is www.joesimesandlovingkind.co.uk. Ben's full biography. Or they'll also have um, all their. There are two albums in double A side of single are available for download. I bought both myself during the week and I was very impressed by them. So, Did you like the you heard a cash register ring over in Fizakerly? Um during yeah, the so, so I'd recommend anyone give these guys a go. They're good lads, support their band. They're going places. You haven't heard the last of them as long as George Sefton is in the is on the public address at Anfield. You'll be hearing a lot more of them as well over the next while. But if you are in Liverpool on the 2nd of July, get yourselves down to Jimmy's. Um, you can buy some new trabs in Transalpino shop just down the road as well. So, um, it's there as well, yeah. Really Wall Street. Um, so look, plans as things stand, what I know you've the, you've the, the four track EP coming out. When do you hope to have that for these guys? Hopefully by the summer. I mean, because of what's been going on, it's it's been delayed. It's been delayed a couple of times only because, uh, well, you know, because you know, it, it should it should have been out about it should have been out about about August last year because we started recording it early last year. We done the first session. And we're about to do the second session, and on that week, the first lockdown happened, so we had to delay it, and we eventually got back in again uh, and, and got the vast majority of it done uh, over in the autumn. Um, but and obviously when they had this lockdown again in January, we had to delay it again. So fa- the, the last session, all, all we need to do now is record just vocals and, and that, and it'd be ready to mix and master. That will be in in about six weeks' time. So after that, you know, it's a case of just mixing it, which shouldn't take long, and then just re- you know really getting the publicity out there, you know, make sure people are aware of it, and uh, there'll, there'll be a pre-order for it once it's officially announced. And all. So yeah, I'm talking about that. And end of the summer, and end of the summer. Um, have you ever played in Ireland or would you like to come over for a gig? Never been there. Never been there. I'd love to go over there. I'd love to go over there. I'd love to go over there. Because apparently, apparently I, I, got, I got told I've got, I've got like distant cousins who still live over there who are descended from my granddad's parents. That, that, that's, that's what I got, I got told. So if we went over there, it'd be nice to meet some uh, distant relations I've never met before. <laughs> so any music promoters or pubs or Festival organisers are watching this. Joe Symes and Loving Kind are open for business and are willing to to pay a visit to their ancestors' ancestors' home. If we can get over there, we're, we're glad to get over there. Yeah, yeah, like that. Good stuff. No, I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure there will be people um, that would that would love to have you perform as well. You've obviously got a good pedigree and you've toured all over Europe as well. So you know you're the best is yet to come. Yeah, you can get us over there, get us over there. We'll definitely over there and do it. Myself. Um, 
So lads, it's been an absolute pleasure having having you on. It's when you get the the, the four track EP release yeah. or whatever, you can come on and have a show on that. Thanks, Millen, for tuning in, tuning in, everyone, and we'll see you next time on the Parallel Padre Podcast. Good night, God bless. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.